Well, many of us who've grown up watching Michael Crawford can only marvel at his diversity, from the idiotic television character Frank Spencer to the lead role in The Phantom of the Opera. But away from the spotlight, there have been personal hardships, a serious illness that nearly ended his career and forced him into hiding. Ray Martin caught up with Michael in London. I had every test known to man. I went to the hospital. I had brain scans. I had body scans. Everything. And they, they can't find what causes it. And it's still a great mystery. I thought a brilliant idea of mine to, to, to wear this fat suit to play this big uh, Italian count. So you want to blame? Yes. I'm, it's, it was self-destruct, I'm afraid. And it looked wonderful. Uh, I, I did it for three or four months and slowly I was losing pints of water. Betty, you can't go now, it's the middle of the night. I am a problem. Michael Crawford used to be the ultimate physical performer. He did all his own stunts, all the manic pratfalls of Frank Spencer. <laughs> this is the centre of the world of musical comedy, London's West End. Times are tough. The streets are packed more than the theatres. But this is the exception because Michael Crawford is back, this time as the Wizard of Oz. We're off to see the Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. I've watched him for many years, enjoyed every performance that he's given, so for me this is a joy. I've been to London for over 20 years. After eight years out of the spotlight, recovering in New Zealand, Michael has returned in triumph at the London Palladium, where it all began half a century ago. Other ways to see the world. You've got a show in a couple of hours. Do you still get stage fright? Uh, yes, I still do. It's just terror. But if it's terror, why do you do it? It's adrenaline. The physicality on my side has, has lessened of the the work I do in a way that made it easier because I was concentrating on something like Barnum. I was concentrating on four steps, then hit the trampoline, then I'm up. Plie as you go into it, jump. It's a technical thought and then when you get there it's thank God for that. <laughs> you're, you're presenting but you're to the audience but you're saying Oh my God, I got there, I did it. That's one trick out of the way. This is what theatre's about, isn't this morning? Yeah. Despite having the most famous face in theatre, his grandchildren think that he was a secret agent, with no idea how talented he is. That's why he's come back to the Palladium. I convinced my grandson, he said, uh, what did you used to do, Papa? And I said, well, I, I said, I can't really talk about it. Uh, I said, it's... Uh, I used to work in special ops, and I said it was, it was something, because he's mad about the army, and so I said, it's not something that I can even now talk about, it's very emotional, Charlie. Well, what, he thought you were a killer? Yes. He said, have you ever killed anyone, Bob? I said, don't go there. How many times have the grandkids seen it? They've seen it about six times now, and absolutely love it. Sometimes we may feel something simply can't be real. Do you find you forget the words? Constantly. I mean, one of the best was in Phantom, when I used to go, stranger than you ever dreamt it. And I'd be going across the stage on my knee and she'd, she'd rip my mask off. And I, I looked up and I, I thought, I don't know what, I, what, what comes next. And I went, fum, 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 fum. Fum, 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 fum. That's all I said. And I had people in, they came round, nobody noticed it. So, so much of my diction. <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera has just celebrated 25 years. It's an absolute showbiz phenomenon, pulling in five billion dollars. It's Michael's most famous role in London, New York and LA. And he says he got it by accident. I had a most wonderful singing teacher that I'd gone to since 1971 when I did Billy. He always had his window open proudly in Chelsea, side street here, to, for people to hear all his pupils. And when I walked in, the window would go down. And, and Sarah Brightman 
who was then Andrew Lloyd Webber's wife, arrived early for her class and they come in the front door and go downstairs and it's right underneath the music room. And I'm crucifying Caracelve and, and afterwards he said, all right, that's enough, darling, you can go home now. I said, thank you, Ian. I said, uh, how does it sound? It's coming, oh, it's coming on, yes, yes, there's the door. And so off I went and in walks Andrew with Sarah and he said, who, who, who was that singing just now? Who did you just have? He said, oh, I'm so sorry, Andrew. He said it was Michael Crawford. He said, he's going to get better, I know. He said, I think we may have found our phantom. And obviously I'd beaten the stage doorkeeper at the Victoria Palace to the role, because I was about the last person they, they looked at for the role. He played a, an already recorded uh, overture. And I heard, da, 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 da. And I thought, this is the Phantom's Theater. And I stood and I listened. My head went down. My hair stood up on the back of my head. And my shoulders rose. And I, and I, it was like somebody, somebody possessed you. It was, it was the most extraordinary feeling. Does it still do it? A thousand, yeah. two thousand letter? It yeah. does when you hear that opening yeah. bar. Oh. Yeah. Now you listen to Michael Crawford's humble stories. And every role, it seems, is just a lucky mistake. Like how he got to play alongside Barbara Streisand in Hello Dolly. Don't you think my dancing has some polish and the flair? The word I think I'd use is athletic. I was asked to go to meet Gene Kelly. And um, I arrived in this hotel in, in San Francisco. We get to the room and he says, all right, now he said, kid, can you dance? I said, well, no, I said, I've only just got off a plane. I said, I'm, I'm really, I've got jet lag. He said, well, can you sing? I said, yes, yes, I can sing. And he said, uh, well, now I've got to see you dance. I said, well, I, 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 okay. He said, look, it's simple. Let me get up here. Because the, there was thick carpet everywhere else. So he stood on the coffee table, threw the books off and went, da, 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 da. And I said, oh, that was wonderful. I said, I remember that. He said, never mind where it came from. He said, get up here. So I stood up and I'm next to him on this coffee table in the middle of San Francisco going, I said, God, we'll, we'll laugh about this one day. <laughs> he's, he's grabbing me by the collar. He said, what we're looking for is an attractive idiot. And he said, my wife thinks you're attractive and I think you're an idiot. <laughs> when he was playing here. But what wasn't a laughing matter was when Michael Crawford was flattened by chronic fatigue. He secretly retired to New Zealand, thinking that his show business career was over. This way? Yeah, you're all right for a certain amount of time a day, and then you suddenly, you have no energy at all. And it's quite frightening. Was it ever a time when you thought, I might die? No, 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 I didn't, no. But it, 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 I didn't. What I didn't allow was myself to get terribly depressed about it. You put those thoughts out of your head. I didn't want not to see my grandchildren and growing, and I didn't want to lose my friends. I think stress causes. I was in a very stressful business, and you, you. Now I don't look at it in the same way. As soon as I find this too stressful, I would, I would ask to leave. Can you imagine Frank Spencer with? Chronic fatigue? No. <laughs> I think he'd love it. He wouldn't have to go and look for a job. <laughs> Apart from playing The Wizard of Oz on the West End, Michael Crawford has released a new album. It's his 12th, called The Story of My Life, exclusively for Australia. Do you have a favourite? I mean, it's a silly, impossible question. Music of the Night. Music of the Night? Yeah. It's it's wonderful song to sing. Change, change my life completely. What is it about Australia and Michael Crawford? I'm cheaper. <laughs> cheaper than us. Cheap, We're yes. just like crappy humour, isn't yes. it? <laughs> Can you believe it's almost four years ago? And yet people still say the moment you stumble, they say, "Oh, this very special." <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm truly proud of that. Obviously. Do you ever get sick of Frank Spencer? No. No. Even though people keep looking for him in you. It, 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 I'm, I'm flattered. Yeah? But I, I'm, thank goodness I've had the opportunity to, to play musical and then, I mean, above all, to do Phantom, which was dramatic.
beyond belief. And then when I go to America, they'd never heard of some mothers. So over there, believe it or not, I'm a romantic figure. A <laughs> <laughs> lovely man. I could listen to those stories all night. And can you believe Michael Crawford turns 70 in January? His Australia-only album is out now.